Hello, my name is Chris Kiak. I am a Tecla Structures trainer and consultant. And in this video today, I'm going to showcase how to work with the 100 foot elevation as your first floor or your finished floor elevation rather than zero foot zero, which is defaulted in Tecla. Now, if I come in here and I create a new model, we're gonna see that this 3D view has been created. And if I open this up, it's going to show a default grid that is also created here at zero foot zero. So when I click on it, you'll see in the, the zero, or sorry, the Z coordinates that there is a, the lowest elevation here is at zero, and then there's 10 foot, 16 foot, and 20 foot. And if I actually uh, switch myself into plain view for this 3D view, so if I do control P on my keyboard, or if I come in here and double click on the view properties and switch between 3D and plain. So if I go to 3D, it rotates me in 3D. But if I switch this to plane, then I'm actually looking at the zero foot zero elevation where this 3D view was created from. Now, one thing that you need to understand is that, again, this is at zero, zero. So if I model in a steel beam here real quick from this uh, grid line to this grid line here, and then I just go back into um, this 3D view. So if I just switch back to 3D and modify, we'll see here that this beam is actually modeled at zero, zero. If I right click and say inquire part, we'll see that here the Z elevations are zero. Another way that I can tell that I'm actually at zero, zero is this green box in Tecla structures represents the global coordinate system. And the lower left-hand corner of that box shows me the true zero, zero, zero um, coordinate in the model. So I can see here that clearly my grid and my viewplane, because I modeled this beam, are at zero, zero. Now that's not what I want. I want to actually work in 100 foot zero. So what I need to do is, and what a lot of people do is they come in here, they click on their grid, they type in 100 foot, and then maybe they do like 110 foot, 120 foot, and then they'll change their labels. And you know, so let's just do that 100 foot, 110 foot, 120 foot, and then they go ahead and press modify. And then they get perplexed because the grid basically disappeared. So the first instinct that a lot of people do is they'll come in here and go, okay, I'm gonna double click on my background, which opens up the view properties. And I'm just gonna come in here and type in 900 foot and then um, you know leave the six foot down below. So they're thinking that, okay, hey, I'm gonna change the view depth up and I'll press modify. And then I'll even right click and try to fit my work area. Why the heck am I not seeing my grid? Now to try to keep this uh, video simple, the first thing I'm gonna tell you is that your grid plane moved up to 100 foot. And if the grid plane does not splice through the view plane, then the grid won't show. Now, since the, the lowest grid is up at 100 foot, it does not intersect this view plane for this 3D view, which is at zero foot zero. So the fastest way for me to move this view plane for this 3D view that's at zero zero up to a 100 foot where the grid is, is if I just click in this view, so that way it's selected, and I know a view is selected by seeing the golden border around the view. If I then right click and choose the move linear option, this brings up the move linear dialog box and I can see a direction X, direction Y, and direction Z. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and type in 100 foot here. Now be careful to not just type in 100 inches, you wanna put 100 apostrophe for 100 foot. Now I've got the view clicked on the background and here I'm gonna interrupt here because I don't need to pick the distances. I'm just going to select the view and I'm gonna press this move button. Now, whenever you move a view plane, Tecla is making sure that you really wanna do that and you'll get this prompt. So don't just click through this, just read through it and make sure you understand what's going on. So I'm selecting this view, which is created at zero, zero, and it's saying you're about to move the view plane and I'm gonna move it up 100 feet. I'm gonna say yes. So when I do that, now this 3D view is no longer at zero foot zero. The view plane actually got moved up to 100 foot. And if I click on this grid, we can see that the lowest Z elevation in the grid plane is at 100 foot, then 110 and 120. So since 100 foot is actually, you know, slicing through this view plane that is now at 100 foot, that's why I can see the grid. And if we actually zoom out a little bit, you'll see that the global origin is down here at zero foot zero, still at the bottom of the model. But the grid and this view is now up 100 feet. Now I'm gonna come in here and model in a beam just to make sure. So I'm gonna control P so that way I'm in a plane view and I'm looking at the actual view plane. And so if I pick two points to put in my beam, I'll right click and I'll interrupt. I'll go back to control P to look in my 3D isometric view. And then I'll click on the beam, I'll right click, say inquire part, 
and then we'll see here that the z elevation as shown in the inquire is now 100 foot so i can tell that everything is working correctly by looking at the global work plane down here i can see the grid is up here at 100 foot where i've moved it and then when i model in a beam in that view plane at 100 foot i can see that it is correct so this is the fastest way for you to quickly get yourself moving up here to 100 foot. Now, one last thing that I wanna showcase is columns. By default, all of your column properties are going to be built for basically zero foot zero elevation. So you have to be really careful here. So here I wanna set my top of column not at 20 foot and not at um, basically you know zero for my base or negative 12 for top of footing. I actually need to come in here and enter in true 100 foot level elevations. So if 100 foot is my finished floor, then I might have 99 foot for the bottom of my column. And then at the top, I might have, for instance here, 120 foot for my roof level. So now when I actually pick and put in my column, we're gonna see that it's at the correct elevations. A lot of people forget to do this. So what ends up happening is they come in here and they will have these default properties. So watch if I just go back to standard, I have these values down here based on a zero zero. And when I put the column in, you'll get this message that says, hey, do you want, I want to expand the visible work area. So what happens is your work area around your grid is going to extend down below. And then you're gonna see that your column is down here near the zero zero grid origin. So again, you just wanna change these elevations so that way they're based on the 100 foot elevation so that way your columns are in the correct location with your grid. Now I'm gonna delete this here. And then once I delete that out or move it up, I can then right click and say fit work area to entire model. And now basically my visible work area is back up here at the 100 foot elevation. If you found this content useful, please subscribe to our channel and press the alerts button to be notified when we upload new content.